Hello and welcome to another episode of the Tinkle Hoy podcast. This is our final edition of Sequelitis. If you have not seen the other videos, we've gone through the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all the following sequels. As usual, I'm your host, Juan, joined with... Your other host, Quentin. I hope you're prepared for an extra sleepy edition of the Tinkle Hoy podcast. Because it is currently... It is currently... I don't think it's that late. It's it's midnight, 12.06. It's midnight? It's midnight. Oh, dang. Yeah. But I mean, the last one we did was that I think we were filming at 2 in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Like we started filming at yeah. 2 in the morning. We, were, we had monsters. Yeah. I brought a, a shit ton of monsters. I have a monster here with me actually right now. Yes, yeah, so for our final Texas Chainsaw Massacre, we actually, because when we spin the wheel to decide what order we'd watch these in... We got them in order of release, surprisingly, so... Weirdly enough. This is the latest Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which, once again, they decide to say, hey, you know what, let's make a direct sequel to the first one. I... This is the third time. Yeah. Third time. Hopefully, the last time. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Probably not. Would you say third time's Mm -hmm. the the charm in this case of this movie? I... Well, that's the thing, though. After having watched all of them, I don't know if this is like a final thought kind of thing or if I should just say it, but I think each one does something interesting and good, but like the ultimate Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot or sequel sequel would be one that takes um, parts and bits from all of these as an example of like something nice to do all right so what would you say from the from the second take texas chainsaw massacre 2 the the first one that came out um i the the with lefty and yeah so i think i loved the characters the characters were fantastic they each had charm to them and all that but also the finale the finale for that was perfectly done because a as a sequel with maybe another sequel on the line they left enough things ambiguous like we didn't know exactly who was dead dead well i mean that grenade goes off and Mm -hmm. we it was last one done so we gotta assume the leatherface lefty and grandpa the, the like dar- folks, his name Drayton, Drayton Drayton Sawyer all kicked the bucket. Yeah, but uh, the brother could possibly live well, on. Well, yeah, I guess because yeah, cause he just stretch, falls down. A, hits him and he falls down. A shoe is like yeah, they could he could have lived. Yeah, but that's the thing is like for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, do you really need Leatherface? I think kind you of. do, but I think you also need his family. Yeah, because this Which this something- also make you think that. He can't carry a film by himself. Yeah, when did when did we figure that one out? Did we figure that one out after watching that one and moving on to the next one? 20, yeah, we watched twenty thirteen because that's his. I haven't seen three and four, but they're their own thing. I've seen the reboot and the prequel to the reboot. Mm-hmm. But you know they have the family involved. But I think yeah. twenty thirteen is the first instance of it's just Leatherface. Uh. Before we start this, I have a question for you. What? Because this is your second time watching this? Yes. Third? Second? My second time watching this one, yeah. Because I watched it when it released because I was like, ooh, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it. Oh, did you like it? Wait, so you saw it in theaters? No, this was a direct to Netflix. Oh, sorry. Yeah, COVID. Uh, (laughs) Forget that that happened. But um, did you like it more the second time or less? A bit less. Okay. I kind of realize how clunky it is. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Okay. So for context, this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 with uh, Bad Ombre Productions and Legendary Productions. I didn't see a director name. That's why I'm naming off the studios because I actually don't... I see you're right. I don't think I saw a director's name. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same director. No, from... I... I... 
unfortunately, I think that the main director, Toby Hooper, I think his name Toby was, Hooper, passed yep. away like a while ago. I, I imagine. So it, it had to be passed on in the reins. But this is, of course, the most modern take on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I actually wanted to, to, go, I just want to go back to our previous conversation. So what from 2013 did you like? Because you said... Oh, oh, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, let me... Everything. Sorry, my brain. I'll, I'll just leave on tangents. 2013, I I liked the aspect of exploring uh, Bubba as a human character. Because he... I, I think, too, did that as well. Yeah, he's most humanized in uh, the 2013, though. I think he was most humanized in two. But... I, it's just that aspect of him allowing people to care for him if they're not, like... But they were family. That That's the thing, but, like, he doesn't really know her too well. He's just a family member. I mean, yeah, what if he didn't see that... Yeah. Brand of sacrifice, sort of, yeah. necklace <laughs> mark on her? That's the thing, is, like, I, I've half... Ex- like, imagine you're, you know bedridden for like a week and instead of family member like a close family member taking care of you so one of your your like parents a distant family member yeah someone just came in and said this is your uncle he's gonna be taking care of you for the next week it'd be pretty weird yeah but you would still let them yeah well like i said there is a lost cut of where she read the letter first and they all just chilled out and had a good time they played pool yeah, it's like I imagine. <laughs> I imagine if Leatherface doesn't think people are trespassing in his home, he's a cool guy. Um, I enjoyed that. Another thing I enjoyed with that is the location. They kind of kept the same location. It's implied it's the same house from before, just rebuilt because the original house burned down. Possibly, yeah. I guess I didn't think of that in the introduction. They kept the location. It it was like a director's cheat code on like hey it's a mansion now like wait how is it a mansion though like where do they get all this money from i'm not so sure if it was i think that was her home because i I think the hewitts were loaded yeah that might also be it so overall um, would you say you enjoyed this texas chainsaw massacre because a brief summary is there are these a bunch of influencers i'd say Food influencers, Food apparently. Food influencers were able to purchase, like, a square, like, a small, small, like... That's the whole town. Like, the whole town? That's the whole town. They buy Didn't the whole seem town. very big, though. No. Like, a very small town, and they are going to, um, gentrify it is... Yeah. The thing is, they want to create a utopia. One character even says that, I like, like yeah, you're a cult. Yeah, exactly, because trying to make the world... Like, the things that they say is yeah, very culty. They just have the unfortunate thing of running into Leatherface. Mm-hmm. The one thing I did like about this movie is that the main characters do Leatherface wrong. And that's how they, like, incur his wrath kind of thing. True, but you could argue that the first movie they did, too, because they trespass into his home, and for all he knows... Yeah, but... Texas has that stand-your-ground law. But it doesn't, like, going back to the 2013 and uh, even the 1986 version... Well, that one, too, where you just see some random person he don't know. Yeah, but this is a way older Leatherface as well. This is 50 years. Yeah. So... And we don't really understand how much he thinks and knows. He doesn't even really talk. Yeah, at so all this is a direct one. sequel, I guess, getting right into the spoilers. So, why do you think he's at this orphanage? Do you think he just never went home after that, after he, after Sally got away? Because <sighs> in all of them, in one and two at least, we see that he's bullied into killing and. That his family, like, you know, mistreats him. They bully him. Mm -hmm. And it's their way of life. So, yeah, do you think that he was just so scared to go back home that... He just never went back. Yeah, And he ran away from home. Because I gotta assume it's within close distance because... Yeah. The stinger at the end of this film is him going back to that original house. On foot. On foot, yeah. 
That is an interesting question because it we're assuming off of the original ending where Father Drayton's still alive. Yeah. And he's still alive. Drayton and Grandpa were still alive at the ending. And that... The hitchhiker was killed. Yeah. They... The police and Sally look for them and can't find them. Well, yeah, they raided the house. Mm-hmm. They find all the stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So... And they don't really say that, you know, that, hey, we caught... Drayton. Uh, they caught Drayton or the, that they might have just booked it, too. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like they're both still out there in everyone's eyes. So he would definitely have left. But the context behind him, like, ending up at just a ghost town orphanage. Well, we don't know if it was a ghost town back then. No, it definitely wasn't. Because, because in it... the picture, the the um, main cast C mm-hmm. of the orphanage and, like, all the kids, Leatherface is, like, in the far back foreground. Yeah. It was founded in 1925, and then she's been taking care of him for 50 years, but she wasn't there in 1925 because there's no pictures or anything from 1925. Well, she's an old lady. She might have been... I... Well, I guess how old would that make her if it was fa- if she if she was running it since 1924? She would be like... If she was born at 1925... It'd be eighty well, not years. I'm not saying four, and that she yeah. was old enough to be running. Maybe like she, she'd be early twenties. She'd be hundred. <laughs> she'd be in her hundreds. She'd be a hundred and like ten, a hundred twenty. But I, from that picture, I didn't even get that that was Bubba. Yeah. I I just kind of because well, I, mean, I got that that was him. One thing I didn't know until someone pointed it out that when they first go in the house, he's sitting in a chair. Mm, at the top of the stairs. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say it has to be at the top of the stairs. He's in the bottom left. (laughs) He doesn't like move. He's just kind of just sitting there. Weird. Yeah, they they very they go a weird route with him in general. This whole movie. Cause I picked up on it super fast, but he he has supernatural powers. You mean how he's got daredevil hearing? He's got daredevil hearing. He's got the slightest creak. That. Yeah, he has cat Someone's lady. Upstairs. He has cat lady walking in this creaky ass house. He could somehow be in two places at once. You gotta tell me which part you. Uh, for that. so we have uh, part of it. We're kind of introduce some of the characters. We've got Dante, who is the number one influencer. He's kind of like the main dude. Uh, he's the one that's arranged all of this auctioning of these ghost town houses that he's bought. And then we have Mel, who is the chef. Who, I don't remember the names, to be honest. Yeah, I, for some either. reason, remember the names. Well, there's only, like, five. So it's pretty easy there's to remember. There's only a couple name drops, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dante's partner. Da- Dante's partner, who is Dante's partner. She's not given a name. <laughs> Even when, um, when... Because they're first flagged down by cops to just tell them, like, hey, we're just making sure that because there's a bunch of you kids coming that you stay out of trouble. Yeah. And he... He introduces like he's like this is my future like my future wife or something. Yeah, my future wife. Exactly. Doesn't say any of their names. He's like this is my future wife and my friend's sister. Yeah, exactly. So well, he, he I, says his name Dante, and yeah. then he says Mel's. Mel's because but then the those two he introduces like by titles instead yeah. of their names. Yeah. But the part I'm talking about is Dante is downstairs in the kitchen, and Mel is upstairs in mama's bedroom and there's something moves for both of them right for dante well i think it was leatherface opening getting home getting home from where where did he go (laughs) he was well we gotta do this play by play we're jumping all around yeah i'm tired okay yeah oh well we which one do you think would it be better? Because we could play by play. I guess play pretty, by play. We could do that. I got my notes quickly. are pretty. Yeah, because at the beginning of the movie, uh, we get told the whole thing that um, it's... Sally survived. Um, mm-hmm. She ne- um, tried looking for him. She never spoke of the incident. Which is an interesting aspect because uh, the other movies portray the event, the main first movie, as like a legend. 
that no one really talks about. And in this, they're like, yeah, we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I actually put that the IP is real because yeah. they're, they're selling Texas. They're selling Texas Chainsaw oh. Massacre corkscrews and, and T-shirts and cups. Yeah, it's a good thing she grabbed that corkscrew. Yeah, is but. It, like, immediately establishes itself different from the others by saying, like, hey, the first one happens, and everyone knows it happens. Yeah, for the third time. Like, it's common word of mouth to be like, yeah. oh, Leatherface, haha. Uh-huh. Um, but we have our four, I wouldn't say four main characters, but we have... The main cast we're going to follow and see get murdered. <laughs> yeah. Riding in their super expensive car. Yeah. They're... Smart cars. It has an autopilot. Yeah. Because when, as they're driving, Dante presses the autopilot and then just lets go of the wheel and... Of course he would. Yeah. Of course I, he I would. I actually caught a goof uh, in the gas station. What is the goof? When um, the character Richter shows up in the truck, uh-huh. he freaking parks really far away from the gas tank. We see him. Mm. But then like in the next scene, it's like... He's right, right next on to it. the gas tank. But um, we have our main cast, who are all, I hated all of them from the get go. From the get go. From the get go. Yeah, from the get go. And I liked Richter too. I mean, I liked Richter. I mean, because Richter shows up. Um, he's a regular Texan. Mm-hmm. Blasting well, guess, metal yeah. music. But I guess In yeah, his he's, he's like he's trick. a tech like. Texan, you know, big tr- uh, riding a big truck. Um, he's got a gun, and immediately, for no reason, he doesn't even antagonize these kids. He's just getting gas. They're making little. They're they're making dick jokes. So, one of them makes a dick joke about yeah, him. Yeah, Mel, Mel, our main protagonist. Yeah, she's saying he's compensating. Sister. That's why he's carrying a gu- a gun that big. It's not even a big gun. I was so irritated. I was like, it's not even a big gun. And it's just like, well, yeah, it's Texas. Like, Well, he says that there's like the warthogs. Or yeah, the feral hogs. Wild boars. Stuff. I'm not sure what the term he said was. The feral hogs. And that... Actually, now that I think about how what he says, it kind of mirrors... Yeah, exactly. It's like when there's an infestation in your home. The beginning of the movie really tries to get you to think that the town is going to turn on them for some reason. Well, I didn't think that. It really does. The town's supposed to be empty. No, no. It's it's a very thinly populated town. Oh. Essentially, it's that gas station, which probably is for another place. You have Harlow, the ghost town, where Richter lives and works at. At his shop, I guess. Maybe well, I he doesn't work. I think he was just going there because we find out later he was the contractor. Yeah. For our influencers. But, and then it's two cops. Yeah. In a 50 mile radius. So there's another town 50 miles away. So it's just like that's all the people that are there. But on their way to the town after they kind of antagonize Richter and he hits him with some blowbacks. Yeah. They, they, they get stopped by some sheriffs on their way to Harlow. And they're just doing, they're just, honestly, the timing is kind of weird because... I they said they know a lot of the kids are coming, they just want to make sure, like, nothing bad yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly. And I had to think about that first, like, a split second, because I was like, oh yeah, with the time frame that this movie came out, a uh, fire festival happened. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it was, uh, like, a uh, was it? Kim Kardashian or something? Essentially, it was kind of like this, um, like, warp tour for rich people. And did it go, like, did something bad happen? <laughs> oh, yeah, some bad stuff happened. A lot of people went, it was, like, in, like, some deserted islands, right? And it was supposed to be just a big party with a bunch of celebrities and music stuff. And they, like didn't have anything set up they didn't have porta potty set up they didn't have like a steady supply of water they didn't have enough food for people so they did not plan this out no they didn't so fire festival was a horrible horrible thing happened and it like even though it was kind of like a deserted island there was a town close by and it 
took like a big brunt of it. This also happened kind of with Woodstock as well. There was a lot of damage done by Woodstock, especially back then where no one gave a shit about the environment and stuff. So it like to me, I understood why they were doing what they were doing. And that's something that I picked up early on was like, I'm kind of on the town side in this because they're not even doing anything wrong. They're just making sure they're... Well, Harlow is a ghost town now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they said that, you know what, we, I, like, we grew up here, we saw this town when it was in its prime. Essentially telling them to just be respectful. That, you know, be respectful of the town. And we learned that um, Mel's grandma used to live in the town. Yeah. Which I thought was gonna come back in Honestly, some yeah, way. Honestly, yeah. Say that, yeah. I think it's just maybe just a she, choosing of dialogue. Yeah, so the she, cops are okay with them. She did a persuasion check. Yeah, and <laughs> that persuasion check helps them in their next thing because as soon as they get there, what was the um, other chick? Her sister's name? Lilia. Lila. L- Lila. Yeah, Lila sees a Confederate flag. Yeah. And Dante's immediately like, we can't have that. Investors are coming, and if they see that, they're not going to want to buy anything. Yeah. And he's also personally insulted by it, because he is an African-American man, which is understandable. And especially, I liked how it makes sense, because it's 1925. It it made sense. I was like, okay, yeah, there can be a Confederate flag in the deep south of Texas, even yeah. this well, that's, late. Well, that's I even say that. Like, we're in the deep south. Yeah, what'd you expect kind of thing. Yeah. But we're, we're skipping over an important detail about our main protagonist. Oh, that she she is a school shooting survival survivor. Yeah. Which I kind of... Do done tastefully in this film, or...? I almost feel like there needs to be more context with what she says with it but it's it's our main theme of the movie that i picked for up her, it's her, for her it's her for her the main theme it's I'd the say. main theme of the entire movie for me because uh, from what i'm seeing i i kind of picked up on it because i was like oh shit there's a lot of uh decent it's uh decent if i can't even speak desensitized people in this movie but we'll get to that here in a second but she's a school shooter survivor and her sister has her they're moving here yeah they're moving to harlow this isn't just like a one time we go there we sell some houses to some other rich influencers and everyone makes money and starts a business and I I guess we get we build a airplane strip an airport so people can fly in and honestly I kind of felt like she was kind of like Shinji through most of this movie because she's just kind of just sitting with her yeah. earphones in yeah she's very besides the scene when she goes and like how old do talks you... to Richter how old do you think she would be I don't think she I still think she'd be in high school because exactly they make it sound like the shooting happened very recently very recently like the wound is still there it's scarred but yeah like possibly a year has passed exactly because like just from the way she dressed i was kind of like okay like she's either just graduated or still in high school because she she had the converse on i don't know why converse means you're a high school student right i guess yeah okay but um back to this confederate flag that's hanging outside of a building so Dante doesn't like the flag mel doesn't like the flag no one likes the flag no and that could be agreed upon even richter doesn't even like the flag technically yeah i mean well <laughs> right freaking dante's partner says she's gonna go get the contractor richter i'm gonna get the cowboy yeah, and but they decide to go inside the house because it's supposed to, everything's supposed to be abandoned. Mm-hmm. Which honestly, I kind of feel like they should have known the second they walked in because there's still a bunch of items in the house. Yeah, and I I guess that's hindsight. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You think you would have thought like you know like why did the people like that like did were they just like all kicked out or like why are there still possessions and everything in yeah. these homes? Yeah. 
I was gonna say, so they walk into the building and it's shown to us that it's an orphanage. I'm surprised they never acknowledged it, like the characters themselves. They kind of walk in and they're just kind of like, these are some weird pictures. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they all they both go upstairs to try to get rid of the Confederate flag. They don't succeed. Then they go back outside. Yeah, because it seemed like every window in this house is barred. Which is normal for an orphanage. Yeah, which means there ain't there ain't nobody jumping through windows in this Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Like, you know, if there was no window, this chick probably could have just jumped out the window. Mm-hmm. Two stories. And avoid. Easy. I mean, I'd say it was kind of two stories in the old films. Yeah. She jumps from upstairs. Yeah, no, well, she, I guess would that be one she story? She jumps from the attic, doesn't she, at one point? In the first movie? Oh, yeah, Sally jumps through two windows. She, she jumps through two windows. She jumps through the kitchen window. Oh, yeah. And well, then that she one's jumps. Lower, and yeah. Then the top one first. The attic, which is a three story. But um, as they're they're leaving to go get Richter and get a ladder, I'm assuming, uh, they get stopped by. They find out that this house is not abandoned. Yeah. There was an old lady living in this house. Mm hmm. And they kind, of, they kind of freak out for a second. Because, yeah, they say that she's not supposed to be here. Um, the bank, like, repossessed this house months ago. Mm -hmm. But the lady keeps claiming that that all got situated. This is still her home. She's got a... She has the deed to the house. Mm -hmm. And Dante just don't believe her. Yeah. And that, They ask if they can see it, but she's kind of... She falters. She's like, I don't have to show you anything. Yeah. Which is weird because she clearly knows where it is, or maybe she doesn't. But she just kind of falters for a second that gives Dante the push that he needs to kind well, of. Well, I mean, I, I can, I think that's kind of human nature. You know, when I was a greeter, you know, when I worked at Walmart and I was a greeter, and people would get super offended that I'd ask them to see their receipt because, like, it's my job to ask. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, if, if I you see a big it. ticket item, they say I have to ask. It's not me, like, being a, being a dick. I just have to ask. It's my job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they'd get super mm. like, I'm not going to show you. All right. So they... Mel proceeds to, to kind of push onto her that she needs to... Leave. Well, it says that you know we could, like, you know, if they can take. There's a home we could take you there. You'd be better taken care of. Yeah. And at this point, the they got the cops now. The cops are here. Yeah. And they 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 are trying to actually help the influencers. Like they don't try to like calm the situation well, down. I think they. Uh, I think they're all sort of the assumption that they bought the entire town. Yeah. Any all of these buildings. Exactly. They, be they weren't a neutral party, and they they try to force. And they her probably out. didn't know because we find out later in the film that she does indeed have the deed to the house. And the reason I I say that she has to know where it is because it's in a jewelry box. Yeah. In her in her room, I feel like. With a key. With a key, yeah. I feel like she would be like, "Oh, I have a special place where I put very important stuff, just like this." Let me go check. But um. They they try to get a little handsy with her because she doesn't want to leave, and she starts having a heart attack. There's something part of heart attack. I, I, I was just about to say I was like I'm she's not on sure. An oxygen tank. Yeah, she's on an oxygen tank. Could be pneumonia if anything. But yeah. um, she pukes. Stuff's going bad. They get her. In, well, ooh, well, Leatherface like, shows yeah. up. He's up on the stairs. And, and I think she knows his true nature. I think she knows that he used to kill. Definitely. Because she, in the times that she's alive in this film, she tries. She seems to try talking him down. Yeah. She talks him down right away, saying that she's okay. And uh, they. They take her. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I. Well, because she's that, and they say oh, we got to call an ambulance. The cops say we are the ambulance. So. Mm -hmm. Did it did it throw you off having Leatherface revealed this early on in the movie? No. No. Kind of threw me for a loop because I was like, "There he is. There, there's the boy." I just was surprised to kind of see his face. 
as I much think as we did. This is the first time we see his face or him without the mask. Yeah, we don't get to see all of it though. Because I think I I think we get like jaw lines in twenty thirteen. Jaw line and like upper eye. Upper eye. This, you know, we see you can make out his face even though he's in shadows. Yeah. Um, but they put Mama. I'm just calling her Mama. Yeah, I I noticed immediately in this watch through he eyes Mel and Dante. Mm-hmm. When they go when he's getting inside the well, what would you call that kind of cop car when it's a cranking wagon. No, I'm joking. Uh, like, oh my gosh, I... Jockey box. A security, like a security one? Because it's the one that, when they're taking, when they usually take a bunch of inmates and they'd be in the back. Yeah, it's a, a full-on van, cop van kind of thing. Multiple seats at the back. Which, if Dante's partner didn't go, they probably would have been safe. Mm. Because Dante's partners goes, and that makes the other cop have to be in the back. Okay. I think they both would have been riding shotgun. Yeah, I see where you're getting. All right, but they, but someone they feel bad for possibly putting this woman in the hospital. So Dante wants to go, but then no, Dante- Mel wants to leave. Mel wants to leave, yeah. Mel wants to go. Mel can't well, first go. They try to Dante go and wants find, to go. It's like the deed's a huge just plot point in this because they try to go find the deed and it's like, oh, it's not here. It's probably in the office back in Austin. Yeah, because they, they don't... They have a very big morality compass well, issue. Dante still believes that, that they have the deed and yeah. Mel's the only one that like, what if we don't? Yeah, exactly. They don't want to have... Well, you're getting a little bit ahead because, you know, at this point, she's just going to the hospital. But, uh, Dante, Dante's partner, <laughs> sucks that we don't have a name for her. Yeah. Dante's partner gets in the in the car, telling Dante he needs to stay, and they go... Oh, yeah, because the investors show up as all of this yeah, is going down. Yeah, the investors show up as this is all going down, so everything needs to go perfect, and they start writing off... 50 miles to the nearest hospital I'm assuming and stuff goes bad for uh, mama and she passes away but before she passes away she says don't go in my room and remember remember I taught you to be a good good boy boy. yeah so it's like I think even then she's like she was trying to talk him like don't go on a murder street yeah yeah you're better than this kind of thing if that's in the past but um which why does she if because the chain, um, jumping, uh, jumping, we're jumping all over the place, but we find out that in her room, behind the bed, in the, behind the, where the bed's placed in the wall, is his old handy chainsaw. John Wick style. I, I, I think they just thought it would be cool. You think so? Yeah. I, like, why does she keep the chainsaw? And it's like, did, it's like I, I imagine that's what the line's there for. That she says, don't go in there. Yeah, yeah. I could, of course. Maybe that's the villain of the Texas Chainsaw. It's a chainsaw. When you pick <laughs> up the chainsaw, you feel the need to kill. Mm-hmm. Like Stretch did. You know, she got the chainsaw and it's like, I'm going to kill you, Chop Top. <laughs> and yeah. Lefty, he was carrying three yeah. chainsaws. Yeah. He was ready. He was ready for a murder spree. But um, she passes away, and uh, Dante's partner immediately texts Mel, saying that she died. Yeah. I'm assuming. And that's kind of where the whole, we need to find the deed, because I need to know if we were well, I mean, right. Dante gives no fucks here, because he's like, oh, whoa. Oh. No. Like, that sucks. He says, damn. <laughs> he he's goes, like, oh, damn. But, like, it's kind of like, oh, I, that's, that's bad. Yeah, because in, in, in his eyes, squatter. Also, yeah. yeah. Well, Mel's like the only one feeling extreme guilt. Mm-hmm. But um, Leatherface proceeds to absolutely lose it over the death was well, Did this happen first, or does um, cause they kind of happen concurrently? Because we got like, we we skip the part when she goes to look for her sister and she's talking with Richter. And that scene has to happen because Richter overhears the old lady died. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's why he takes their keys. Yeah. But, yeah, so they have this bus. I don't know why they didn't just use their car. Because it was taking a bunch of investors. It was, oh, it was, like, trying it was to, a party bus. Trying so to keep everyone safe. Okay. Yeah, you probably keep everyone together. Like, hey, we're all getting, we're all taking this bus. We're going down there together. and We're coming back together. Oh, well, I meant, like, the main characters. I don't know. Like, for some reason in my head, I'm like, that's where you just leave. Well, they wanted to. Mm-hmm. But Richter takes the keys. All, all the keys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess he it is all the, the keys. He takes the bus keys and, the, and, their car, and their car keys. I didn't see that. But, um... Well, yeah, well, because they say we're just going to go and um, Dante tosses her the keys and Richter just... Keep away, keeps away the keys. Just <laughs> grabs it mid throw, and then goes on the bus and grabs their keys. And that's why they go back into the house to try to find the deed because yeah. Richter wants to see that deed. Yeah, that's my to know that, that they were keys. actually in the right and they didn't just kick a woman out of her home. Mm-hmm. Well, they find the deed, which means that they did in fact kick a woman out of her home. Yeah, which I. I imagine an alternate universe where Mama remembers that she does have the deed and exactly where it is so that they just have neighbors, her and Bubba, just a bunch of rich investor neighbors in this kind of like snazzy hippie town. Well, I I guess it's interesting you say that because she does kind of, because the thing with the Confederate flag, it was there, she said it was her daddy's and it reminds her of him, but then she... Acknowledges, you know what? I kind of realize, yeah, how that can come off. His great granddaddy. So oh. there's a little bit of like separation, separation, which I guess is more power to you because it's like the more distance you can get from that, the more you can be like, I don't really believe it. I just have it because I mean, she does drop the N word. Yeah, not... she says she's taking care of no. black children. Yeah, 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 kind like you. She says. And yeah. then she drops it. She doesn't use the no-no one. She just I, used, I guess yeah. so. But still, you know, it's kind of like not painting yourself in a pretty light. But yeah, I guess back to the... Mama dies and Leatherface goes ballistic. Yeah. Do you feel like in that moment he felt like he needed to kill or he is just I think waiting to get point, set off? He wants revenge. Yeah. And he blames all of these people mm-hmm. for this incident. I mean, I guess I... Because mm. first death, you know, grabs the cop's wrist, snaps it, and then lodges his bone into his neck. I just had, like, the weirdest thought. <laughs> Why he pulls out the gun in that instance and it... And no, no, I'm I'm thinking like symbolism kind of stuff. It's kind of weird to think that s- most of the deaths involve like why? Well, they're really visceral in this one. I think this is the most visceral. Yeah, it is definitely the most visceral, but it's kind of weird. I'm thinking like I'm like trying to wrap my head around it. The people that die and how they die is almost like payback for what they did. Because the police officer grabs Mama, right, and too hard. There was, there was this whole conversation about don't, like, treat her that way. And he's like, no, I just barely touched her. And he breaks his arm kind of thing. And then with some of the later deaths, you can draw lines but yeah he goes on a killing spree gets the weirdest i mean we get three deaths before we get the first before we start getting chains we get a couple it takes a while before we get to the chainsaw deaths. yeah it takes a while to, which yeah which i which guess the original one, one did too one. because most of them died by bludgeoning yeah his favorite his second favorite yeah <laughs> because he... like you know what now that you say that about symbolism he does use the oxygen tank to kill the other cop that was in the driver's yeah. seat. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. I'm drawing these conclusions. I kind of feel like, even when I first watched it, I feel like this was the most horror moment because it felt the most, like, tense. And I'm going to get to this in a second, but, um, so keep that symbol- symbolism in mind, okay? So he kills, uh, the two cops after the car crashes. Which is really luck. It's like a stroke of luck that after he killed that first cop, that he was that gun went off. His first gun kill. Kill with a gun. Well, he didn't. He didn't shoot the gun. It still counts. I mean, he grabbed the guy's arm when mm-hmm. he grabs a gun, and he shot it, and it yeah. ends up shooting the driver. Yeah. But that doesn't kill him because the driver's still alive enough to get bludgeoned by the. Yeah. By the. Uh, oxygen tank yeah exactly we'll, we'll get to that in a second so car crashes dante's wife passes out dante's future wife dante's partner Fiance. dante's partner dante's partner is what i said it yeah dante's partner honestly with i mean when it happened i was like it was like how convenient they crashed into like the yeah only tractors equip whatever i don't know what the term is combine for, yeah just like in like a miles radius yeah in this field of sunflowers where it's open every single way you look except for this one combine right yeah, there they just happened to crash into it she blacks out which gives uh leatherface time to in like the weirdest twist of his personality pull his dead mama out the car proceed to cut her, her face off Dante's partner wakes up and watches this in the passenger seat, kind of struck with fear. Watch him cut Mama's face off. She only dies by incompetence, by the way. She gets the radio. I mean, she's able to... It's incompetence still, because she could have just stayed quiet. Shut the fuck up. You don't think... I kind of feel like Leatherface double taps... No, he really doesn't. And we get multiple instances of that. We get two. Okay. Three. No, two. Um, But she calls over the radio. And there's only one person in a 50-mile radius, but they CB radio. Well, she gets the gas station, dude. Well, it's just a CB radio. She's not calling to anyone specifically. Oh. It's just out there. So he's the only one listening within a 50-mile radius, which kind of makes sense because it has a limited range, I'm assuming, depending on what kind of technology we're dealing with. But gas station attendant picks up, or he kind of realizes after she's mentioning that he is cutting her face off that it's Leatherface, so he makes a call to Sally Hardsteady. Do you realize they gave them... Gave her a last name? I'm not sure if she had a last name in the... Did not. I don't remember a last name. I feel like we would have picked that up after four movies. <laughs> but well, I mean, Sally. This is the first instance Sally's come back as a character. Exactly, which is another aspect I like about this one because they utilize her. They utilize Do her. They? they. I was gonna say they utilize u- her pretty poorly. Yeah, exactly, film. very poorly. But she's been wanting to hunt down Leatherface. She's been trying to hunt down Leatherface for the past yeah, but 50 she hasn't. Years. She said she hasn't talked about it. To, like she shoes away the news outlet when they try to question her more about it. Yeah, um, but she knows instantly and gets locked and loaded and heads out to Harlow. But this makes Leatherface come back. I want to do. I want to go by one. No, she gets she. Has a picture of her friends, which shouldn't really exist. Yeah, you picked this up as the first because the retcon. hitchhiker burnt the picture he took of all of them in the first film. But I noticed, but it also doesn't make sense. It's also a retcon that uh, we only see four people in the picture. Well, where was Sally in that? She's sitting on the floor, isn't she? Or is that... We'd have to we'd have to look at the first film again. We would. And, like, see, like, okay, Sally was next to the hitchhiker, so, yeah, she wouldn't be in the picture. Well, like, in theory, this could be, like, before the hitchhiker. Was that his camera? It was. Or did he offer to take the picture? It, w- it was around his thing. It's how he makes money. Oh, okay. Remember, is he just takes pictures and he shows them and... 
It's like five bucks, five bucks for it. But uh, yeah, we're in an alternate universe where they pay him five bucks and they get a picture of them all looking nice and pretty. Uh, yeah, she's kept this picture for 50 years, holding a grudge. But um, back to Dante's partner. Yeah. <laughs> keep forgetting, keep stumbling over that. Um, Leatherface comes back because the, the cop in the driver's seat kind of wakes yet. up. Yeah. And. But she plays dead. Yeah, she plays dead. Leatherface double taps him. And this is where I'm like, she dies of incompetence because, like, after he walks away, she. She tries to make a move. She tries to get away. Well, she tries to open her, her door, but With, it's jammed. Yeah. And she decides to just get up and get out the driver's side door. And Leatherface pops up on her side and... Breaks the window, grabs her leg, and yanks her. Pulls her. And kind of kills her in, like, the least pain... Like, mm, not the least I don't know. Way. I think getting your... He, sl- he slowly slices That's her... That's also because, like, they're struggling stomach. over it. But, yes. But... This is where I'm, like, the symbolism. Because it's the only kill that Leatherface seems to, like, not really enjoy... Or kind of regret. Why do you think he regrets? Because he, he gives he gives her oh, a little he... hand pass over her head, kind of like I'm sorry. It's just a little I'm sorry, and she cries. She cries some tears, and to me it was kind of like she was crying because like I'm just Dante's partner in this movie. Yeah, exactly. So to me, I was like he kind of knows that she had nothing to do with it. And oh yeah, because she... she wasn't. She's not one of the people he saw. Yeah, but also he's the one that shows his mom a sympathy. She comes with them kind yeah. of thing. Because if you think about it, uh, driver side driver cop dies by accident, purely. Uh, first cop dies because he gets aggressive with him. She's just passenger seat. and We didn't get aggressive with them. Cause he's like, hey, cause he, cause he was struggling with the oxygen tank, and the cops like, hey, you could just calm down. And then he looked at him, gave him like a yeah. death stare, and the cop like backed up, and then he grabs his wrist and yeah, snaps it. Yeah, he was in he was in denial, but then we get our Leatherface making his way back to Harlow, which brings us back to. Dante and Mel looking around in the orphanage for the deed because they need to know. Whether or not they they killed a woman, because at this point they know that she's dead. Well, Dante never learns that. Because mm. she find Mel finds the deed. No, oh, yeah, Mel... Dante never finds out that he was in the wrong. Yeah. That's what you mean? Okay. Gotcha. But yeah. Uh, this movie, out of all of them, really likes Chekhov's gun. It uses Chekhov's gun couple times which is nice because i don't know if you noticed it but when we enter the kitchen with dante the meat cleaver is there it's on the table and then when dante comes back after the noise the meat cleaver is gone i did not notice that yeah that's it, why i enjoy watching movies with you man because you just <laughs> notice shit I that gonna, i don't well, yeah but and it's it was really well done too because the meat cleaver is like lower left or like middle middle bottom because that's something really subtly done lots of movies like you know would linger yeah would linger definitely. on the shot of the thing and then when they go back they'd linger again like oh you see it's exactly gone exactly so like the second i saw the cleaver i was like check off's gun and then the second it was gone i was like good job good job movie because then it immediately gave us the weapon but um dante gets cut up killed yeah, well, he gets... Quotation marks, yeah. He gets, he gets the freaking... Chelsea Meat grin. cleaver to the jaw, and it, like... Yeah. He get, dislocates he, most of his jaw. Yeah, he gets the old Chelsea grin, which... Symbolism, okay? He's the one who was arguing with his mama, so he loses his jaw. Okay. Yeah. See where I'm going with this? Okay, yeah. See where I'm going with this, Okay. So, uh, Mel freaks out and hides upstairs. Well, yeah, because Mel sees the sees Dante's body, di- like dying body, and Leatherface like looking. I think Leatherface was about to double tap him there. 
Mm-hmm. And then here's Mel upstairs because he's got daredevil ears. He hears <coughs> the slightest creaks. Yeah. So she hides upstairs. Dante's downstairs. Leatherface goes upstairs. There's a lot of moving characters in this movie. You don't really follow one person too long. Yeah. Um. Uh, trying to figure. We, she hides in the closet. Leatherface, yeah. you know, goes oh. in the mother's room. You know, takes the dress and is like crying over it. He puts yeah. on makeup. And then we get. And then he hears the influencers, and he gets angry. Mm-hmm. And he goes down. He goes down to grab the sledgehammer. Because at this point, he's associated the influencers with the death of his mama. Yeah. Um. Because Dante. Oh, because go. Mel tries to get Warn out of them there a little bit. Where she's like, freaked. she's like, if the wind, like I said, here's when I thought, like, oh, if only that window didn't have yeah, bars, you could have just. Yeah. But I feel like she was trying to get their attention. And it's bad timing. Cause well, I the, think there's no way she could have. She's kind of waving, but she's trying to be quiet. Yeah. And stuff. I don't know. It was a weird scene to kind of just watch and well, yeah, okay. be on for yeah, a well, bit. Yeah, well, face comes back up and she hides into the bed. And this is when he breaks the. He wall. John Wicks the wall. And I grabs his hand and chainsaw. That. I hated that so much because the second he was like, oh, a sledgehammer, and he goes to the wall, I was like, we really going to do a John Wick reference? I mean, he was breaking concrete. Yeah, but it's the same thing. I guess so. Technically, you know, just being Leatherface like... Leatherface is part of the Continental. Yeah, he's just like, didn't want to do this. You guys are making me... I'm back in business. <laughs> guess he's back in business now. Yeah. Um, Dante wakes up, though, because he's just had severe blood loss, and he walks out, because he wants to warn the influencers now, where, along the way... I don't think he wanted to warn them. I think he was just trying to get out of there. Maybe, maybe. Because he doesn't say he can't talk, he doesn't really say a word to try to, like, that he's just, like... Yeah, um... Richter sees him and is, like, saying, what were you doing in the house? He sees they're dead, and right here... He should have given the bus people their keys. Yeah, yeah, honestly. That's what I feel like. You should have gave the bus people the keys because he, he tells them to call. He, he tells the bank lady to call the cops. Mm-hmm. But then she kind of keeps this information from everyone on the bus. Mm-hmm. Which maybe the bus driver wouldn't have went out the way he did if he would have known <laughs> the situation. Definitely. I also feel like we're ignoring the fact that Richter may have known that they were well he knew they were there right well he sees a, he saw Dante come out of the house yeah and he's, and at, he's well he's asking him like what they were doing happened. in there he asks him what they were doing in there well, yeah, then he sees Dante's injuries like you're okay and he sees that and it's yeah. like something happened in that house yeah he's got the whole Chelsea grin quickly passes away in Richter's arms yeah. And then Richter sad. goes to the house armed with his gun. With his big gun. Ooh. It's like a Glock. I mean, I don't know guns, man. Yeah. I would have just said pistol. Yeah. It's a Glock. Uh, he goes in the house. Uh, nothing wrong with any of that. I liked the scene where he gets up to Mama's bedroom with Leatherface and Mel both in there. Leatherface doesn't have his chainsaw quite yet. He's got the chainsaw, but there's no gas in it yet because yeah, they yeah, you're right. make an instance. I put 50-year gas. <laughs> That's what I thought first, but someone told me. Someone told me, like, oh, no, dude, you can hear him. You hear him pouring. Yeah. And I just didn't have good enough, like, speakers back then, so I didn't hear the pouring or have subtitles on. Yeah, I, I heard the pouring, too. And he's even working on it, it a little bit. It even says pouring. Yeah, he's also, like... You here here screwing. Tuning, tuning it, yeah. But, um, yeah, it won't start, but he hears Victor coming up the stairs because it's a very creaky house, and just, he decides to hide behind the door. Pretty smart in these ones compared to, like, others, because we never really see him use tactics like this in other in the other Texas Chainsaws. Yeah, he, yeah, he's very, he's thought things out, weirdly enough, with everything like he he's does. Smart, he's really smart in this one. Like It's like, I'm going to hide behind this and I'm going to get him and he's not going to expect it. Mm-hmm. So he hides behind the door. 
Richter approaches the door. Mel sees that Leatherface is behind the door. Richter's coming up. I liked that they that they had her push the mirror. Push the mirror. He sees her. He saw her legs. Is like, what the heck? Yeah. And then he sees that behind the door. Leatherface is behind the door. And Leatherface kind of reacts way too quickly in that situation to just being like, oh, he knows I'm here. <laughs> well, I don't think he knew he was here. I think he was waiting and is like, now. Yeah, also could be that. So they kind of are even ground where they kind of both know where I don't, each other I don't are. think he knew Mel was there just yet. Yeah, no, he doesn't. But uh, they have a fight scene, which I thought was pretty good. Except I don't remember a single gunshot being shot. No. No, he it's, doesn't shoot. It's gone immediately. Uh, Richter loses his... Well, break gets his he leg... He gets his broken. leg bent into a J. Yeah. Bent into a full J. And they still kind of wrestle it out I mean, standing. I mean, he gets a few good punches in there. Yeah. And that's one thing about Leatherface in this... Something made him otherworldly mm-hmm. because this is why I put this in my notes in the other films. It's like, okay, Wrench throwing at Leatherface knocks him down. Like, a, like yeah, he's very human in the first film. Like, you know what? If I throw this at him, it's going to stun him and he's going to fall down. And, you know, he chainsaws his leg. Mm-hmm. Second film, who, who shoots? Is it Stretch that shoots the fire extinguisher at him? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. And, it like, is and that affects him. Yeah, kind of. And then 2013, you know, when um he gets in that carnival and he sees that cop with the gun, he immediately yeets yeah, out of there. Yeah, he's like, fuck that, I'm not dying. Like I said, chainsaw doesn't make you bulletproof, but in this film, apparently it does. Apparently it does. Because he takes a lot of shots and he's like, he just tanks them. Mm-hmm. Like... And he, I swear, they gave him supernatural powers. Oh, yeah. They just kind of boost him up a little bit to make him a little bit more scarier. But they tussle, and Richter sadly loses the fight to a little little piece of glass on the window. And then, uh, falling down on the ground, seeing Mel underneath the bed, decides in his last act he's going to give her the, the keys. keys. And, and then, then Leatherface... Bash. Double taps and oh. just bashes his head in. Yeah, absolutely bashes his head in. Which, like, symbolism-wise... Leatherface didn't see Richter. Did not see Richter. Which, yeah, it makes sense. But I think at this point, there's no... The only symbolism kills are probably going to be the ones directly involved. Yeah, exactly. And I think they're, from here on, it's just like all chainsaw kills. Yeah. But, um, so, Leatherface leaves. Yeah, he leaves, because he goes to the room to fine-tune his oh, thing. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mel tries like... leaving, but she's making a lot of noise, and it's like, at this point, you know, you should have known. Well, I guess she hasn't. She didn't see him have daredevil hearing, which yeah. is like, Creek, someone's up there. Yeah. She, uh, she takes the keys. She doesn't get Richter's gun. Does it? Yeah, she doesn't get. She did not. She did not. That probably wouldn't have been a smart move. Like I said, like I said, it would have been a very smart move. I don't know why. Well, because she's anti-gun. It's very. Yeah. Well, she tries sneaking out, but I knew you were going to laugh at this scene because I laughed when I first saw it. Yeah. Because she doesn't go down the stairs because he's like, how would you describe it? It's uh, it's like a, a turnabout or a roundabout. Yeah, just like, like a. If you walked up the stairs and turned, it's the room that he's in would be right there. Yeah, it's a U, and the right when you like turn the corner of the U, like when you start to head back from going up the stairs, it's at that. The door is right at that corner where there. Where is that? So she tries going over it. But she also knows like right there is like where it's the creakiest. From when she first went up the stairs. Oh, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Because she even reacts to when she steps yeah. there. Okay. She takes a moment to kind of stop and go like, wow, this house is fucking old. But that's where I thought it was smart. That was the thing. Me watching that, I was like, well, she oh. She tries climbing over. Yeah, she climbs over the banister and she tries to lower herself down down from the banister onto the stairs and she just she slips just a little bit and like i think he heard the first creak probably i assume so because right as she like drops down onto the stairs stairs, 
There's Leatherface. At the top of the stairs, just staring at her. And he freaking <laughs> tomahawks his hammer. And she freaking gets smacked, falls like... She flies completely down yeah. those stairs and hits the floorboard and goes straight through. It's like she got launched out of an air cannon. And she doesn't have much injuries from that, surprisingly. No, no. I give her like a... Well, I guess she's got, like, a lump on her head, I noticed. Yeah, I, I noticed that, too. But I kind too. of feel like that sledgehammer would have done a lot more. I thought she got hit in the chest. Am I thinking of the wrong character? Because I swear no, one, you're I thinking saw of a character, the... she had, like, a bump. I'm like, oh, that's where she got hit. We're thinking of the same character, but, like, I saw the bump, but I thought it was kind of something else. Uh, But I could have sworn she got hit in the chest, because, like, her flying back was just... It was... It's weird. It's one of those... You said it was the most anime thing. Yeah, it's one of those suspension of belief. Look, not just because she just flies back. She breaks through the floorboards. I mean, pretty old house. Yeah, she she ends up in the crawl space. And it just felt so anime to me. If Not even anime, just, like action hero -y to have this much destruction it reminded me of the old 80s punisher where oh. yeah where he's fighting the russian oh. in, in his apartment where they're just like breaking through walls and all this yeah it reminded me of that but she's in the floorboards and mr leatherface has gotten his chainsaw to work so he decides to just absolutely chase after her like a mouse yeah well it goes back to sally before this and she comes across the um the sunflower patch where this happened yeah, yeah. Actually, she put here art i didn't i didn't catch it the first time like okay yeah they still have like using bodies and like propping them up as art because he propped mama's body up as art and he, he like put sunflowers in her hair yeah and stuff yeah i I didn't know whether to call it a shrine or art. Kind of a sure, well, kind of both. Do you find it weird that out of all the faces he could have worn in that situation, he chose his mama's face? Because I always thought he only wore victims' faces. Well, this is, I mean, I don't think we see him chop off a face in the first film. Mm -hmm. we're, they, we're just kind of told that, hey, he's wearing, like, a human's face yeah in two you know he cuts off um what was his name um spit guy spit guy spit guy it's like let me oh, look let's back, look back at, the at the notes really quick uh do 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 I don't think I put his name down. I don't think I did. I think it started with a D. Uh, da, 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 da. That one. Yeah. And I don't think he takes anybody's face in the 2013 one. Right. Wait, no. No, he, he takes he takes one of the cops' face. Oh. Yeah. He the the one that live streams it or, uh, yeah. or facetimes it for the mayor he takes his face which is interesting i don't know yeah he just kind of picks and chooses i think yeah but i don't know why he'd go with his mama's face to be close to her to be close to her yeah the makeup scene was kind of a nice throwback too we kind of skipped over that because it's not really important. doesn't really add on to anything. Well, I mean, I guess it's the instance of seeing him as human like the other ones do when he gets those first two kills in the first one. You know, we see him have, like, a mental breakdown. He's like, oh, and, like, looks kind of worried. Yeah, and, and also then, him you know, just kind of wearing the, the apron. Yeah, and the second one, you know, we see him have more, you know, falls in love with Stretch and actually lets her live. Mm-hmm. And doesn't want to kill her, but his family goads him like into like I have to give you to them. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of the human moments, kind of poorly done because it's kind of it was kind of just confusing for a moment because was... yeah, well, he was just weeping over her. Yeah, just kind of showing that he's sad about her and everything he's doing now is because these mm -hmm. darn kids. Uh, but back to it. So Sally finds the wreckage sees the dead bodies finds grandma's mama's and then corpse we, i i didn't think she called the cops 
I didn't think the banker called the cops because we just see her going to the bus and she doesn't tell anyone the situation or we don't see her pull out her phone. Well, we we get the we get the radio. Yeah, because this is how she found. This is how she finds out that there's a dead body in Harlow, and that's the next place to go yeah, to for her. But that that's the um, that's the what are they called? The police dispatcher. That's the yeah. police dispatcher saying calling those guys. Those like, guys, because they're the ones nearest to Harlow. They're the only police officers Apparently. within a fifty mile radius, and that's the thing too is like they don't know that's where it originated from. So they, they the police dispatch doesn't know they're dead. Yeah. So it's the only reason it's trying to get to them is because they're going to be the quickest kind of thing. Yeah. Uh. Which is weird that no cops show up after the fact. True. Yeah. But, um, so Sally knows that he's probably in Harlow. Well, he is in Harlow. Yeah. So she heads on over. How far do you think they drove away before the mama died and all that stuff went down? There's actually... Because he walked back. Yeah, there's actually a nice little, little film trick that they use here. Uh, kind of brushed over it, but... As, uh, as the influencers get there, and as Mel is upstairs trying to get their attention, and all that, a thunderstorm rolls in, and it's raining where they are, where Sally is. I noticed that it's dry, and you can see the thunderstorm. You can see in the, the background. thunderstorm. So it is like ten miles, fifteen. It's like on the horizon, which is ten not ten miles. Yeah. There's no fucking way Leatherface would have got there that fast. Not that fast. Maybe five. I don't know how far... Well, no, because they get the message, they go into the house, and they don't look in the house too long before Leatherface yeah. gets in there. Yeah. No freaking way he... If You're they really going to make me pull miles. out like, Pythagorean's theorem right now to figure out how far away they were from Harlow? I don't... I don't... It's, I, as, I mean, it's never as, stated, but if you say 10 miles... It's as far as you can see the horizon, which I don't yeah. know the how far they well, can see. That's what I wondered, see. because I saw the thunderstorm in the background. Okay, it's raining there, but not where she is. Yeah. How far of a distance would that be for a weather to... That can happen. ...to be like, changing? Doesn't matter. It can happen right in front of your face kind of thing. It just... It's dependent on clouds and all that, but... With a horizon, with something that's set, because like this is this is a thing. This is why flat earthers are a thing, where like you can only see x amount of miles ahead of you. So past that point, it should just drop down, right? It's a it's a whole thing. We would have to look into it, and I don't know if our one a.m. brains could yeah, could really process it. Basically, um, just speeding through here, a leather face goes in um is going towards the bus because now he's ready to kill those influencers mm-hmm. and uh mel got away from the crawl space her sister seen her yelling from uh gray and was able to pull it because she uh lilia lil lil lila lila it's like l-i-l-a something like that it's weird uh She's getting anxious while she's on the influencer bus, so she decides to kind of go out and see what's going on. And that's where she kind of sees Dante's dead body, goes to the house, and hears her sister crying out for her. And that's where she comes from. It's not just like Deus Ex Machina, where she just shows up and is like, hey, what are you doing here? But they immediately from there go to the bus. And this is kind of where, like the theme for me started to kind of set in because Lila, that's how you pronounce it, Lila, she's composed. Yeah, she gets covered in feces. No, no, that's Mel. Oh, Mel? Mel's freaking out. She's saying we need to run. No, 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 run, 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 all this. But Lila's composed because she's just kind of like... Well, she has no idea what the hell is she's, going on. Well, she's in this weird state because she knows something's wrong. And then Leatherface, well, they start to drive off. They, yeah, because they got the keys and they start to drive off. Yeah, they Leatherface off. cuts the wheels. I was, I didn't get that. I had no idea what happened. <laughs> I was like, the bus just stopped. He just yeah, decided to if, stop I mean, the bus. If the banker would have let everyone in on the thing, the... Um, 
bus driver who just woke up from a nap and they're telling him like okay drive drive yeah i was gonna say it's like there yeah, had to he's be. just like passed out I was like what yeah there had to be like drugs or goes alcohol. outside and this is when you said that chain the chainsaw in this film is quiet when it wants to be yeah because leatherface like within seconds chops this guy's head off and lobs it and lobs it inside somehow um yeah it made no sense and then the banker, you know, she's so full of fear that she backs up and doesn't really say a word mm -hmm. as Leatherface enters the bus. Exactly. And the first thing all these influencers do is With pull them. out their phones. Which, okay, okay. So if, if you had this moment in, like, any other kind of movie, it'd kind of be like a, uh, oh, God kind of moment. But this honestly, it pokes fun at that idea because they start live streaming Leatherface. And they face. say, try anything and you're canceled. Yeah. So and we even see the comments that people think that it's part of the show or it's, it's fake. not real. Yeah, it's part of the Which party. is scary because, you know, they could like with TikTok and all these things that people can go live, they might get something on film of like, something gruesome and people might not believe it even though it's actually happening i was gonna say a lot of that stuff's happened most i i think for the most part people kind of know like oh shit that's real uh there have been a couple args i know of that have had to cancel because people thought it was real what are ARGs? uh augmented reality game so oh, I think we've talked about yeah, that in a like, previous podcast. Yeah, it would be like, uh, it like Slenderman. Slenderman was an ARG, or there was an ARG of Slenderman. Yeah, we we've talked about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I definitely, now. definitely. But there have been instances where people have had to cancel ARGs because people thought something serious was happening and was like, no, it's an ARG, which like is an unspoken rule of an ARG is you can't come out first thing and be like, hey, this is an ARG. For some reason, like, you gotta leave notes and clues and stuff, and people pick up on it, and that's where people kind of go, oh, it's a game, let's play. Um, but yeah, people think it's fake, and... <laughs> yeah, Leatherface starts going to town. Which... And to, that's when we see the comments, is when he starts killing people. Yeah, to me, this was, like, the funniest part of the movie, just because of that. Just because of, like, what if you try anything you're gonna get canceled bro and then he tries something or immediately the guys immediately when he revs the chainsaw yeah the dude's like oh fuck exactly so we then get a very very nice the most kills in any texas chainsaw we've seen he thus racks far. Him up. he gets that kill streak <laughs> kills all of them yeah he kills every single last one of them except for lila and mel who mm -hmm. are able to escape and as they're going away, Sally has arrived on the scene. Well, <laughs> I hate you. Why do you hate me? You brought up the corkscrew in the beginning. Oh my god, and you're you right. didn't even give the payoff for it. So, uh, this is where, like... Another Chekhov's gun? Um, yeah, I was gonna say, Chekhov's gun. It's the second one in the movie. There's a third. It's the last one. Uh, I, I mean, technically, fourth. There's four. But, um... I didn't catch the first one, funny enough. Uh, so, Corks, they, uh, Lil, Lil Lila, I keep wanting to say her name's Lilia, but it's a League character that's named Lilia Lila. Her survival instincts kind of kick in a little bit. And they hide in the bathroom, and they kind of get away from the, the slaughter that's going on outside. But Leatherface knows they're in there, so he breaks a hole in the door with his he puts the chainsaw through it i i kind of he does uh shining because he cuts the hole and then looks through yeah it. i was gonna say i blacked out for a second <laughs> i was kind of laughing a little too hard uh pokes his whole his head through sees that they're in there they're freaking out and he tries puts to... his arm through to open the door from yeah. the outside which is very like, i don't think he's ever done that usually he just chainsaws the entire door down. yeah yeah it gives it the whole the x and all that and just kind of pushes through it but then mel pulls out her little chainsaw mass ta texas chainsaw massacre corkscrew and corkscrews him in the arm and honestly i thought he was dead <laughs> no i'm joking 
Because it seemed I to mean, hurt the, him I a mean, lot. in the past, a freaking wrench was enough to take him down. Yeah, but that corkscrew hurt him a Has lot. Has he taken any damage? Well, that's the first damage he takes so far, right? Yeah. Because he gets a few punches from Richter, but he takes those. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and they escape through a... The uh, top, like yeah. the top window. It's of like a, a ventilation, ventilation yeah. window. Yeah. They climb out of, and they start running away. And there's Sally. Sally shows up. And immediately... Why didn't he continue to chase them? Because... Why didn't he? Yeah, because he goes back to the house. You're right. Because mm. they get with Sally and they think, oh god, we're saved now. And it's like, okay, just drive. We gotta get out. He's like, like, I can't do that. It's like, he wants... Which is weird that he... That she immediately like puts together like he wants you yeah so i was gonna say like the reason he goes back to the house you could say is because that's his new thing now is where if you run away he's going to pursue you kind of thing so he goes back to the house to kind of reconfigure and like oh do you think he assumed that when he saw them running to the vehicle that they got away no i feel like he's like planning his next step kind of thing because he plans his next step like right after this uh sally locks them in the back of her truck because Cause it's a cop it's a texas ranger vehicle so yeah the she's a texas ranger now uh and she has a shotgun which you said it was a she had slug bullets yeah she had slug <laughs> slug shells slug shells slug sh- <laughs> sorry you made me laugh i don't know gun terminology <laughs> you're fine you're fine it they I, th- I guess I saw them from the bottom instead of, like, the actual case of the shell, so it kind of weirded... I it was a shotgun. Yeah, it like, weirded oh, me out for a second, and the I couldn't tell what color the shells were. But I was weirded out for a second because I had no idea what she was using. But um, she she's ready for this moment. She wants to... She's been waiting for this moment, like, for years. Oh, you're absolutely right, actually. He did think they were gone. Because he goes back to his room. Like he didn't pursue them anymore. Yeah. Like he saw that a vehicle was approaching and they ran towards it yeah. and thought like... They're gone. Another one gets away. Yeah. So he goes back to his room. Maybe that's, Sally, my, that's what I'm thinking why he went back. You're absolutely right because Sally goes to the room and confronts him in the stupidest fucking way possible. I know. Because she has him dead to rights here. Yeah, she's got that... I don't know if it would have worked if she actually would have shot him oh. given how many times he tanks future bullets oh. to come. Yeah. But damn, she would have done some damage. Yeah, because she was point blank. Point blank. Back of the head, front of the head. She could have got him at any point in this. But he's in his room just kind of moping. He's not really doing anything. He's just sitting there and, like, looks, sees her, and Mm -hmm. she's, like, she names all of her friends that he killed. Mm -hmm. And then she's Heisenberg's, like, say my name. Say my name. Say that you remember me. And over here, freaking Leatherface is over here is, what's that Street Fighter guy's name? With the, that wears, like, the military uniform. Is it Bison? Guile? No, not Guy. Is it Guile? Guile. Military uniform. What do you mean? It's like a military. He ki- it, He's Chun Li's like main villain. He killed Chun Li's parents. I don't know Street Fighter lore. Okay, <laughs> wait. Are, are we talking? Are we talking like? I it, think it's it, Bison. He's got like a military uniform. Is it camo? He's a bad guy. No, it's like a red. He got like he has like a red hat. Not, okay, sorry. Me and you were thinking very different military. Because Guile wears camo well, it's like pants. A, and it's a like top. a captain. Yeah, that's Bison. That's bison. Master, master Bison. It's a Bison moment from the street, from the first Street Fighter movie. Where? When he's telling Chun Li, like, for you, the day that Bison came into your life was the most important, like, the most important day of your life. For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I thought about. It cause truly it's like, was because guess what incites him. To, like, move and, like, get away from Sally. What? He hears Mel and Lila, Lila screaming in the car. That He realizes they're not gone yet. So 
he truly Shit, is I didn't realize that. just after them. So he picks up his chainsaw and he walks right walks past right Lila. Past she lets him. Not uh, Sally. Yeah, she does let him. Which is another dumb fucking move. This is I just put like shoot him. Yeah, definitely. She. She. So this goes back to my whole desensitization. Desensitization. Desensitized. Desensitized thing. Because in my eyes, when Sally's character is revealed, she's shown to be, like, desensitized. Desensitized. Well, she's a Texas Ranger. Yeah, and she's also butchering. And I think okay. Texas Rangers are pretty, meant to be pretty hardcore, right? Sure. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. If we're talking Chuck Norris, Texas Ranger, then sure. But... <laughs> I mean, King of the Hill made them look important. Yeah, they 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 are important. They are a little bit better than your basic cops, but uh, they're like Texas SWAT essentially. <laughs> um, but she like his presence and everything still freaks her out, yeah. and that's like her kind of still reeling from fifty years ago, right? But Leatherface approaches the car breaks the window and proceeds to try to attack them and and then she comes back this is when she starts taking shots at it like yeah. remember me now yes she just totally ignores the fact that he does not know who the fuck she is i think it's yeah uh, whenever she's like super gung-ho yeah like lefty but not as cool exactly so she starts pumping him full of slugs and they're hitting they're hitting him. They're I not... just like what Leatherface is OP now. Yeah, he doesn't really he they they like bounce off of him, which is insane. Yeah, that's why I said he's taking these shots when in the pa in the first film, which you know this is a direct sequel to, mm-hmm. and he's young in that film. You know, he's probably in his like near his prime. Yeah, gets taken out by a wrench, and here he's taking shots. I wish that truck driver would have been in this film. Is the truck driver in this film would have been fantastic? That should have been like. A second person that shows up at the ending, like I just heard over the radio. <laughs> I just wanted to do my part. He just sees them. He throws the wrench and, and then it works. He yeah, and he immediately just starts running. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great. But um, what exactly happens? Here? They they get um, out of the car. Leatherface runs away. Oh, he runs into yeah. an alley. He runs. And now, like you know, this is when the. The chainsaw is quiet when it wants to be because it's just very like. I didn't even hear that. It was just silent. Well, also the rain, I guess, technically. And then she's like, What are you doing? And like, you know, she's looking at this alley, and then you hear these footsteps approaching. And she takes a blind shot, which was her. Takes a blind shot and Leatherface. Does he. I don't think he throws it at this point. No, no. He just, He's able to get her down, and he chainsaws her and does his Mortal Kombat fatality when he lifts her up. That's what I was saying. Like, they make him supernatural because he damn near lifts her with one hand with the chainsaw. And then he throws her throws aside her into the trash. Feet, 20 feet into the trash with her shotgun nearby. And somehow, spoiler, she's still alive for a good while. Yeah, yeah. Because after that point, you're like, I mean, first watch, like, oh, damn, she's dead. It was kind of a waste to bring her into this film just to die, mm-hmm. to Leatherface. Bring this legacy character just to die. Yeah. Um, they... It's so weird. Okay. Leatherface runs away again. Okay, no, yeah, well, no. After this happens, Mel and Mel tries running him over as he's oh, yeah, killing yeah, yeah. Sally. Mm-hmm. And Leatherface gets nicked on the side. I saw that he got nicked on the side. Yeah, he kind of like there. He's the reason why they veer off. Yeah, is because he's just a fucking concrete block. So they hit him and they bounce. Go into Richter's Shop, home and yeah. smack into there. Mr. Texas Rip, born and raised gun yeah. owner. So, uh, Mel gets impaled by a piece of metal because it's a auto body shop kind of thing. So there's just metal everywhere, you know. 
And there's a moment where Mel's accepted her death and says... Accepted that he's going to kill me, but you need to run, that you can still get out of this. Yeah, you're strong. While he's killing me. And, you know, um, she leaves and Leatherface comes in and she says she's sorry for what they what happened to her mother and that they're the cause of it which honestly i liked i liked the fact that she's like we deserve this and Uh, then um just before he gets her lila shows back up and she has a gun which we didn't mention this but prior in the beginning is when she first talks to richter um, she sees the gun and talks to Richter about it, and Richter sees that she's uncomfortable and unloads it when she first asks, like, is it loaded? Well, because she picked it up. Well, he, that's when he hands it to her. She doesn't pick it up until he unloads it and hands it to her. Yeah, I, I could have sworn she picked it up beforehand or something. But And then he took it away from her and unloaded it and then gave it back to her. Oh, I, I don't remember the I don't remember order either. events. But yes, because Richter unloaded the gun... And maybe because all the adrenaline and everything that's going on, she forgets that Richter unloaded the gun. That's the thing, though. I, I thought it was because of her incompetence with it. Because... Um, the, the safety was on or the, something? Yeah. The magazine has ammo in it. And she puts the magazine in it. I, I don't, didn't see her put the magazine in it. She just shows up with the gun. I swear it has the magazine I just, in it. I swear you hear the click and that I thought that meant, oh, no bullets. But she could have not racked it. Oh, yeah. 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 But she immediately gives up at that point, so I thought there exactly. were no bullets because she's like, she's oh, incompetent. Shit. That's why I was like, she's just incompetent with it because it, it's it's an AR-15 and it's a little bit more sophisticated than a shotgun. Yeah, and Leatherface goes after her. She blocks the chainsaw with the gun. Incredible. Almost gets her killed and then surprisingly Sally is still alive to get off one more shot on Leatherface's body. Mm-hmm. Which this is when I asked Quentin of like, I was like, how much like it's a shotgun, right? And it's like, wouldn't it like blow a hole through him even at that range? It would. It blows. But it just seems like to nick him, like yeah. It it would blow a massive hole into steel, a slug. Because it it's just like a metal. It's like a bullet like for a shotgun. Paintball guns is yeah, what it's like definitely like, not even anything in it, but um. Then Leatherface runs into the abandoned theater, yeah, which is then weird. Leather, then Sally gives her the shotgun and tells her like not to run away, or that, or like he wins, kind of thing. Yeah, like, don't be afraid, like I, like me. Yeah, exactly. Which gets into this whole desensitized thing because she has kind of, she has a couple moments throughout the movie where she remembers her time at the school shooting at yeah. Stonebrook, and. She even talks to Mel about it, where she says that she should have died. Well, she has survivor's guilt, because she's saying yeah. that all of her friends, that she says that they were, like, the ones with talent and had bright futures ahead of them. Yeah. And that everyone's saying what she's going to do with her life, and, like, she has no idea. Yeah. But even then, like, besides that, she's having these weird flashbacks back there. Where... It's because it's reminding her of the event. Yeah. All the people dying exactly. around her. Exactly. And, but she, there she was passive. And, like, even her old self from there tells her to get up, even though it's Mel. Oh, was that her? That was her lying, lying down. Oh, I, I didn't catch that. Yeah. So it's kind of like a do either do the same thing you did then, barely scrape by, or change something but i mean i guess we're going fast uh, they eventually just get let get the upper hand on leatherface yeah. i don't think we have to go to the whole thing well okay face, last, like... last check off's gun because i i noticed it immediately big pool of water in the movie theater doesn't make sense they use it it's nice it's funny uh but one big difference between this movie and all the other movies is that there's no setup for locations necessarily because in the other ones, it's like the house has a big part of setup, right? In the original. In the uh, secondary movies, uh, we have big setup for the slaughterhouse in the 2013. We have a big setup for the Alamo paintball course in the 1986 version. It was weird to me because, like, 
it felt like we were just jumping from one place to another, you know, middle yeah. of the street, random or party bus and then movie theater. But yeah, they get the upper hand on Leatherface with uh little Ly- Lila putting up a pretty good fight with the shotgun fighting well, yeah because he's almost gonna get get god again but now lila now mel got out of her situation and she's... tries to choke leatherface from behind yeah and then leatherface you know throws her aside um what happens at this point um, how do they she picks up the shotgun again and she puts two more shots into him and he had pretty close range yeah. so it's like and he's still taking these shots it, it, yeah it does that whole combo thing too because he's like about to fall into the water he gets hit once he gets hit twice and he like he's backing up and all that and then she pulls the trigger again and it clicks because she's out and he just kind of like sits there for a second like i'm still here like you haven't finished me off yet and that's where Mel, Mel comes back, comes back again. With the chainsaw. With the chainsaw, which hands. I almost was like, that's like a 1986 reference to it. Just because the way she swings it. She just gives oh, it like. Swings it upward? Yeah, she gives it one like wild, like no and control. We see the gash it creates. Yeah, I, I thought it just got him on the chin, but did it get his entire body? I see, like, I swear you see a big gash. That makes sense. But, uh,. Gets him, and that's the... Falls into the pool. Three-hit combo to get him into the pool. Should have double-tapped him. Should have. Should have taken the shotgun and the chainsaw with him. Yeah. Uh, He falls into the pool, and the one detail I liked about that was that they show that he's alive. How do you... He's sitting there. You. It's zoomed in on his eyes, and his eyes are kind of darting around, and he's just kind of like breathing he's in he's breathing he's just like hurt and he's just oh. sinking he just slowly sinks but at that point i was like, i guess leatherface has call of duty healing he, factor he yeah. just has to wait a while and now he can go back that's why he's not limping in this film he just had to sit a while all right my leg's good now i can yeah. keep going but i honestly i was like he's gone he's dead he's drowned yeah but um we we skip to the morning where Lila and Mel are pretty okay with their situation. Well, it's like three in the morning. When, yeah, um, it's daytime. Sally starts when Sally gets to the sunflower patch because I noticed on her dashboard her clock's at three. Oh, okay, and that makes nine, sense. So it's like okay, so it's like three in the morning at this point. That makes sense. Is that is that almost what time it is right now? No, oh, not even close. All right. But they're they're having a good time. They're joking about moving to Harlow, actually, and they just say, fuck that, let's go home. And this is the last Shekhov's gun right here, okay? Okay. They get into the nice, fancy car with autopilot, and they turn the autopilot on. That's the Shekhov's gun, is the fact that it's showed in the very first part of the movie. That they have autopilot. That they have autopilot. And then she turns on the autopilot again. And then Leatherface is back. And pulls her from the car window. Pulls Mel. Pulls Mel. And then I just want to hear, this is why we wear seatbelts. <laughs> I think if she had a seatbelt yeah. on, we couldn't have pulled her, we wouldn't have pulled her out. And he, executioner style, cuts her head off. Yeah. And then he doesn't even, like, throw it at her or anything. He just kind of, like... Off, like shows it off like a trophy and it's so weird to me that she's just and it's like a modern style of the ending because she's in the back as yeah, it's going away screaming I, this is Sally was I did not pick that up that is fucking hilarious but also f- pretty good to kind of modernize that ending but with the symbolism okay her head got cut off I don't know. It's, it's for me. I I want to say is mindfulness, not using your head, or maybe yeah. It, maybe we're looking too deep into it, and it's just a really freaking insane coincidence that yeah. these ideas that you have fit with their deaths. Just like if she would have used her head, or because she used her head, that yeah, she's that not was dead. Texas Chainsaw Twenty Twenty Two. 
the wait, third wait. the third requel yeah. that they've done. Who knows? Maybe three years from now they're like, hey, there's a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre that's also it's going to be a direct sequel to the original. Is there a Texas Chainsaw Massacre X? Kind of like how Jason X was a thing? I don't think there is. There should be. I would love that. It's like that. a sci-fi Texas a Chainsaw sci-fi Massacre. A sci-fi Texas Chainsaw Massacre where he has a lightsaber Texas or crazy. chainsaw. That would be insane. I'd love it. Um, So, I mean, after watching all these films, what do you think of the Texas, of the franchise in general? I think... Where it's gone, where it can go in the future, because you know Hollywood doesn't let IPs die. They just, like, we're just gonna keep going with it. Uh, we don't want to get too topical right now, but some recent IPs have been brought back. A couple IPs have been brought back, not from the dead, but just reinvigorized. So I'm kind of, I'm tired. <laughs> what's what's the Green Mile thing? I just want to sleep, boss. I just want to sleep. I don't want to hurt nobody. Um, I'm I'm tired of it, honestly. I get it because it's easier to rehash something and it's already shown that there's fans. There's exactly. Fan base. If we make a movie, someone's going to go watch it. It's a guarantee on money, on money back kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I was a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I honestly would not mind whatsoever. It's kind of nice to see these similar different takes on an, on something you love. And right. so, I mean, there was a sting. We said the singer at the end when he goes back to his home. His old house, yeah. Would you want another, like, not not like a, a follow-up to this one? Like, hey, the next one's the next after these events. I would almost be a little... <sighs> so it would be like a trilogy? Yeah, I don't know if I would be disappointed or not if it wasn't a direct follow-up because, to I this. Because, I mean, the end, I mean... End credit scene is like you put that there for a reason, right? Him returning home. Yeah. It's like, oh, is Drayton still alive, but like super old? Does he remember? Does he actually remember? Hmm. Who knows? I think Drayton would remember. Drayton would remember. But th- that's just the whole thing with Sally, because. Where have you been, boy? <laughs> it's been 50 goddamn it's been 50 years. years. I have to always do all the work. <laughs> Here, come try some of my chili. Honestly, they could probably bring Chop Top back. Honestly, they because could. he was a brother that wasn't in the first film, but's introduced. It's like, yeah, you could probably bring that character back. And like, okay, yeah, Chop Top does exist in the first film, and now here's him. It's not the one from two, but it's Chop Top. I feel like you'd be able to answer this question a little bit more. But why haven't we gotten like a son of Chucky Texas Chainsaw Massacre kind of thing? Why do you think we just haven't gotten that? Well, I think of Monix the Slasher's Leatherface is kind of the lower tier. Yeah. Because even when I talked with um, Gunner, because Gunner was saying we didn't invite him to any of these, but I invited him to this one. He's like, oh, I'm good. Because <laughs> it was going to be late. And I said, are things wrong? I was like, oh, it runs late. Oh, yeah, I'm not, you didn't even invite me. Honestly. Like, I know you wouldn't want to go. If I had a choice to not but be he here. But he's never seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Understandable. I showed him two. He liked two. Oh, 1986? Yeah. Hell yeah. I like how we just call that one two. That's, that one's canon in our eyes. Well, I mean, it just it's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Yeah. The other one's Texas Chainsaw, and then this one's just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. I mean, as a fan, I would just want them to put all the pieces together and have uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Ultimate or uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Multiverse Infinity War. <laughs> I want the Infinity War of Texas Chainsaw I remember Massacres. You were saying that you want all of them to meet up. I mean, that'd just be bonkers. It would be bonkers. But, but I it, mean, if they are to continue this franchise, I think Hollywood needs to realize that Leatherface can't carry the film alone. He needs his family mm-hmm. there to bounce off of. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even mind a rehash of one of these rehashes. You know? Like, if they decided to do two over again, but in modern times with modern technology, uh, if they wanted to do this one... Never mind. No, fuck that. This one tried. 
it did its best. I mean, this is the most meh to me. Yeah. I feel like I enjoyed the 2013 one more than I enjoyed this one. I I was going to say, final thoughts, I kind of like this one more than the 2013 version. Because I felt like that one was very drama heavy. Yeah. And this one leans more into the horror aspect. Because that one ends up being that Leatherface is a good guy. You know, quotation marks around good guy. He he becomes not the main antagonist of the movie. While this one, he remains the antagonist the entire way out. Um, out, of, out of 10, out of 10, I would give this an 8. I'd give it lower, man. I honestly, like, I... I had some nitpicks at the beginning with the main characters, but I feel like it redeems itself at the end, like with the climax and stuff. I like the fact that Sally is introduced and she's not, you know... I just kind of feel like she was really underutilized. Yeah, but I, I didn't want her to be a Ripley either. I, I mean, yeah, you don't want to be a Ripley or like, you know, Laurie Strode from Halloween, but it's kind of like... Yeah. Don't put her in such a dumb scene. Uh To where she has him dead to rights. Yeah. That's the thing is, like, some things can be tweaked and whatnot. But I think for my final rankings on Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, are we doing this now? Okay, sure. Are we doing this now or are we doing a final, final episode? Uh, We can do a final, final episode where we just talk about all of them and in general. We're going to have to, like play a video game or something for that or oh no i feel like we're gonna have, have a little bit of substance substance that i will i will do my final rankings next time then definitely all right but would you recommend would you buy would you rent i think this one's a rental it's a rental yeah i could see it being a rental i could see this being you know uh first date kind of movie like i said thing. like i don't think i'd watch like go out of my way to watch this one Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like, like I said, two? Like, you said, like, oh, every Halloween. It's like, yeah, I think I'd go out and watch two because it's just a really fun film. Yeah. Hollow- Halloween? No, of um, oh, Texas two. Chainsaw 2. Sorry. Yeah, I blacked out again for a second. Yeah, I definitely. A very fun film. Like, I think a 2013 film. is one that, like, you know, if it's on, if it was on TV and, like, okay, yeah, sure, I just watch Which like, is the where last. I've seen it. <laughs> That's that's how I knew like bits and pieces of it. It was like I've definitely watched this on TV on Sci Fi Channel, you know. Yeah. Around Halloween time. Yeah, uh, that's our review on Texas 2022. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I'm still doing you. You're fine. You're this. fine. Well, hopefully, hopefully you don't get got by the Drayton family or the Sawyers or the Hoopers. The Hoopers. Hewitts? Hewitts? There was a lot of fam. There's so much. I don't know. It feels like we should be able to spit this lore, like, off the back of our hands, but it gets well, I mean, so Sawyer's convoluted. And one and two, and mm-hmm. then, which was... No, they've always been Sawyer's. So yeah, we see. Sawyer's. I think in three and four, they get different last names. I was, I was saying, yeah, the second family. But, hopefully, don't go to Texas, you know? Uh, guns are good, I guess. Except when they're not, like in this movie. But I hope to see you again next time, where we will be bringing something different besides yeah. our. Well, we'll take sequelitis. a break from reviews and go back to our regular podcast. Uh, thank you. I was your host, Quentin, and I'm Juan. Bye. Bye. <laughs>